Greetings and welcome to the RC Wall Vacuum Channel. Uh, for today's video I pulled the random ramp back out and I'm going to be doing some modifications to it. Uh, I'm going to be giving it the capability to be remotely uh, controlled via voice commands. Uh, so you'll be able to actually be back at uh, wherever you're running your uh, vehicle from and just by speaking into a little module uh, it'll send wirelessly, wirelessly commands to the unit here and it will change position. Uh, I'm still going to have the, uh, the Doppler uh, random stuff set up on there. There'll be a little box on there that uh, switches between modes. So if you're new to this channel and never seen this contraption, uh, the concept was basically uh, there's a microwave-based Doppler radar module up here that, can, that goes all over the place when the vehicle goes over. But uh, anyhow, what it does is it detects the vehicle coming in. Uh, I got it set right now for about 25 feet. And uh, once, it tr once it's triggered, a processor uh, produces uh, random numbers and then that's converted to stepper pulses and then the stepper pulses are used to, uh, to change the, the height of the ramp here, or the angle of the uh, kick plate. And then up underneath there's an accelerometer that detects when a vehicle goes across and once that detects it, then it uh, pauses for a little bit to make sure the vehicle clears and then it rehomes the, uh, back to the home home position obviously using this uh, little mechanical switch and then it's geared and ready to go for the next the next wave uh, to control the position of the uh, kick plate I got a little stepper motor down it's a NEMA 23 frame motor so anyhow this uh, new new uh, version here originally I was going to take and add in a uh, spectrum radio in there and then use your the radio just as a different model in there to control and, and you know the wheel on it to control the position but I started working with these voice modules for some other projects inside well, I'm going to add voice control in this. So we'll go over some of the stuff that's going to be involved with that. So the stepper is going to stay here. The doppler is going to stay here. Um, the accelerometer is going to come out of there. Right now it just looks for shock. It's going to be moved up to the uh, kick plate and then it's going to be used for reading the position and shock depending on which mode you're in. And um, I'm going to, this, this limit switch is going to be, I'm going to be putting two here. They're going to be hard limits and they're just going to interrupt the power to the module. They're not going to be tied back into the processor. They're not going to be in the logic and the software anywhere. All the positioning on the kick plate is going to be handled by the accelerometer. So these two boards here are going to get pulled out and that stepper stays in there. And I have a new board that I uh, built for that thing and let's take a look at that. So this is uh, the board I designed to replace the other two uh, hand, hand perf board uh, wired ones over there. Um, the, this is the DRV8825 uh, stepper driver that's staying the same. I will be adding in this uh, wireless LoRa module and uh, I'm changing it to a, 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 a it's an AVR4809 based processor. Same 5 volt regulator. And obviously, the antenna, there's some other stuff that gets put on there. I've switched over, uh, continue to switch over to surface mount components. There'll be a bunch more surface mount stuff going on in this. There will be an RGB LED in there that will. Uh, give the operational status and including uh, I got circuitry in there for low voltage. I'm going to run this thing off a of 4S LiPo so I'll have the circuitry in there that will monitor LiPo voltage and make sure I don't drop below probably around 3.2 volts maybe somewhere around actually maybe a little higher maybe 3.4 volts I don't like to run them down that low but anyhow that'll be added in and then this thing over here is going to be I don't have this package yet uh, this will be the transmitter. This will be uh, it'll be packed in a nice neat little little uh, box, and then I will take and I will mount it probably off the face of this uh, spectrum radio. So all you gotta do is just basically lean up and speak into the thing, and it sends the commands uh, wirelessly down to the ramp to change its position. So I'm using a uh, small boost converter on here, so that allows me just to put in a single cell lipo. I got like I think it's like a 1200 milliamp. Uh, 3.7 volt one and then the charger you just plug it into the, the USB port of a computer or one of the USB power supplies or something anything like that and what I'm using is this little DF robot uh, or it's manufactured by DF robots a little voice synthesis module and uh, you can it has built-in commands and you can add in your own commands and then what happens is uh, since I'm not what it does is it uh, it takes that reads read your voice and then it converts it into a code and it gets sent out via this radio as an ASCII code down to the uh, receiver. So I'm actually not, I'm not transmitting audio over the radio, it's going to just be uh, codes. And this also has the uh, AVR4809 based processor on there and a matching lower radio. These radios, uh, they're good for 
you get a, a fairly decent line of sight, it's good for five miles out or so. So you can actually, you could use these, these, these modules to voice command something miles away, which is kind of crazy when you stop and think about it. Yeah, so if you're like a practical joker type, you could play some pretty crazy shit with people on uh, rigging up speakers and stuff in their house, I suppose. I'm not that cruel, so I just use it for command for uh, projects like this. So the house the receiver, I just got this, I just uh, whipped up a little 3D printed uh, box for it and um, got a little mode selector switch. Of course I screwed up when I was doing the CAD model, I was going to emboss the uh, tax standard for voice and uh, um, Doppler, forgot about it, so I'm, I'm missing that, but whatever. And the LED will stick up out of there, and then uh, the antenna sticks out the back side here, and I'll just mount down. And uh, it's going to be a nice little convenient package. i got to make a little mount on there for the 4S light bulb. So i got to get this board assembled, and i got to do some weld modifications to the uh, RAM, and swap some components, and then uh, be ready to go out and test it. I'm, I'm going to do a... Uh, We'll take this thing up after I'm done here and uh, give it some tests and see how it works up on the track. So to keep the video as short as possible, I'm going to take and uh, do all the, uh, the board work and modifications uh, off, off camera and then we'll just get it packaged up and ready to go. Stick around. So I got the modifications done and uh, just uh, circuit boards together. And I'm just in the process of trying to assemble it and tune it, debug it and deal with all the issues and there's a lot of them. So like I mentioned earlier, I have this, uh, I got these two two limit switches in there. They're hard limits. They're just going to interrupt power if this thing goes too far beyond its, uh, if it misses the accelerometer's readings or something like that, or some kind of software glitch, just keep it uh, from jamming, jamming itself up in either direction. So there's a new uh, newly assembled board for this particular unit, and I'm going to be running off of that uh, the 4S light bulb there. And then the accelerometer got tucked up underneath there on the, uh, the kick plate. It was down on the main part of the ramp before. But now it's going to be used for all the angle measurements. So I learned an interesting thing about Chinese-made tantalum through-hole capacitors, and that is that their uh, their voltage rings they give them don't mean jack shit. And in a related subject, I learned how to make fireworks. Uh, the only thing was left when I fired the thing up was uh, uh, the capacitor that was sitting there. The little tantalum was two leads, and it was just like a big spark come off of there. And it was like a little little M80 going off in there. So I had to put this electrolytic back in there, a much higher voltage rating. What's, on, what's interesting is I have some surface mount tantalums down in there in that same circuit. They're uh, made by either Sprague or Vichet, I believe, in this country. And uh, the same voltage rating, they're having no troubles at all. So for anyone that's interested in these uh, DF Robot voice recognition modules or the DRV8825 stepper motor driver cards, uh, I'm going to just go through and give a little demo of uh, how to set that up and tune it. A L- little insight of what's going on with these things. So the, the voice recognition module is this little device here, and it's going back up to here, which is the uh, transmitter stage. Uh, I haven't got, obviously I haven't got that package yet, but uh, that's what, what I'm working with for right now. So once I start testing this voice recognition module out, uh, you'll start seeing numbers show up down here. Those are the command numbers. And those command numbers are just ASCII codes that are sent out of the module. Uh, this unit has uh, quite a few built-in uh, commands already there with a number related to them of different various sayings you might use in, in a voice recognition atmosphere. But you can also add in your own commands and basically you gotta just you got to put the unit in a learning learning mode and then you uh, clearly speak your command and you got to do it several times and then that that tra- it translates to another to a, a, a specific number ASCII code number and then you got to look for that in your code. There's also a uh, wake-up command. Uh, power savings wise, it will go into a sleep mode. You can change the time that that's on, and there's a bunch of other commands, you, uh, other parameters you can change on. But for right now, I got it set for the maximum on time. But you still have to wake the thing up because it's only a few seconds that it stays on. And uh, once again, I'm going to use the built-in command. You can uh, change it to your whatever command you want to have in there. So some of the things I'm going to say to make this thing work may not make any sense in the context of a ramp, but uh, once I put my own commands in there, it will. So let's give it a test and see what we get out of this thing. <clears throat> Hello, robot. How can I help? Dim the light. <laughs> All right, there's, uh, there's where I got to do the tuning on the, on, the, on the drive. We'll get into that in a couple seconds. What you can see the command come through. That's, that's the wake up command to 73, and then the 174 is the dim light. Obviously, I just said something at, at, at light because it come up with a 124. So I got the software set so the dim the light command uh, it raises the ramp. But you can hear it was, it was starting a stepper motor. I got to get the current jumped up on it. 
And then uh, the command to lower the ramp, I believe, is brighten the light. Brighten the light. Yeah, 173, that's the command for the to lower the ram. So let me uh, go here and uh, give you a, a quick show of how the, uh, the tune the DRV8825. So there's various ways you can tune these DRV8825s. I basically set mine up when I know uh, they're just timed out. Um, what I'll do is uh, I usually set the current limit to the absolute minimum on the, dri on the drive or the, the car to the motor and then start ramping it up. As long as I know that this uh, the motor I happen to have is what falls within the specs on this particular drive and this one does. It's like a 2 amp I believe and um, so you want to try to get to your re the reference voltage you can read off that little tiny pod. You probably won't be able to see it in the camera here but if, if you have one of these chips you'll be able to see it on the chip and in this orientation um, I believe it is yeah counterclockwise will bring the, bring the current up a little bit so what I'll do is uh, I'll just I'll just slowly increment that up, test it, and then until I get to the point where it's moving, and then I usually I might go just a slight bit over that. See if I move it a little bit. So now I have to wake the uh, I have to wake up the uh, voice module again. Hello, robot. How can I help? Dim the light. Oh. Yeah, there we go. That was just enough enough to bring it up. Um, so to check it. You can go right off the, the ground reference point on the supply and go right to the top of the, uh, get the voltmeter. And over here. And go right to the potentiometer itself, the body of it, and yeah, 1.1, so I, that's 2.2 amps. So I'm, I'm within the spec of the, uh, the unit. So at this point I should be able to get the thing going up and down with voice commands on small increments. I just got it going so it just runs a small increment. I'll play around with what the degree changes are at time. And then I'll be hitting two other commands in there that will just automatically run up to the full top position or to the full bottom position. So I'm still a couple feet away from the voice recognition module so I'll see how well it works from a little bit of a distance. But we should be able to get some movement on this ramp. So the module's timed back out so I have to re-wake it up. Hello robot! Hello, robot. How can I help? Dim the light. <laughs> Dim the light. <laughs> Brighten the light. Brighten the light. <laughs> Brighten the light. Brighten the light. <laughs> so, there's a quick rundown of some of the setup stuff. And uh, when I was just running through that cycle there, I noticed that. Uh, uh, it has trouble recognizing my brighten the light and probably garbled speech. That's why I'm going to make my own commands and uh, I'll try to make it as clear as possible and as short as possible. Uh, the other issue was that uh, it's still a little bit coming down, so I, I got I to gotta bump the uh, current to the stepper up a slight bit. So I just got to go through and finish uh, neaten up, uh, cleaning up the wiring a little bit, and then I got a bunch of software to write for it, and then I'll take it out and give it a test. So I believe I got it tuned up enough now to uh, give it some test. Uh, there's more software to do, but I hope they got enough to at least give us some tries here. I'm gonna try running the sledge over it, and uh, I wanted to go up to the shot or up to the uh, track, but it's so windy I don't want the wind noise. Plus it's, it's sunny, and this camera don't want to focus on bright shiny things, so I got it inside the shade here of the uh, shop. A little dusty in here, but uh, we'll give it a try. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna try to see if I can get it to adjust a little bit, and then run over it, take a couple shots across it, and readjust it, and see if it continues to function. Hello, robot. Yes, I'm here. Ramp up. Okay, got it. Ramp up. Okay. And we'll give that a couple shots there. I'm very limited in space to move away. Well, it rolls good.
yet. So we'll try to reposition it. So I'm going to give it a little more pitch up. Let's try it again. Hello, robot. How can I help? Ramp up. Doing it. Ramp up. Doing it. Ramp up. Okay, got it. Well, that's a little excessive. I don't know. Ramp down. Ramp down. Okay. Yeah, we'll give that a shot. Well, I definitely put some pitch in there. Here. All right, I'm going to take and reposition the camera to give a shot so you can see just how high up that can go with a short little distance. So you may or may not be able to tell in there that, uh, that there's got quite a bit of curve on that kick plate right now. It will go up a lot higher than that, but I'm just going to stick with that for right now. I'm basically taking this thing off from, I'm probably no more than 8, 10 feet away from the, from the ramp itself, so I can't really get much of a run on any of them. We'll send it. There we go. So if you made it this far in the video, first of all, thanks. And second of all, I'll just give a quick rundown of some upcoming projects where I'm planning on taking the channel a little bit too. Uh, I got one more electronics project coming up. It's going to be the RPM sensor tied into the SCADA and uh, the VECTA. But then I'm going to be turning my attention to back to some metal fabricating. And uh, I got some plans on putting a, uh, a, fit, a, a Lozy 5T based geometry, but it'll be a tube chassis um, uh, snowcat basically. It's going to have four tracks on it and it will have an integrated roll cage on it so that uh, the lower chassis, the lower tube chassis and the upper roll cage will tie together and be one unit. I won't be using the plate like uh, the five T's currently have on there. Um, so I'll be going off of that and I got a bunch more stuff coming up after that. And uh, more refinements on this and whatever else I can, my weird imagination can come up with. As far as this goes uh, and some of my other projects I do hope to is uh, I get it refined to turn it into more of a tutorial on them and supply the software and, and uh, boards and stuff like that if someone wants to build their own type of, type of thing. But until the meantime, uh, thanks for watching.